We are here today to provide you with a detailed video walkthrough of the breakdown portion of your Asus RG VR computers provided by Verly and Haptic Studios. The video will be expedited when screwing or unscrewing parts, so feel free to pause at any time. For the breakdown of this computer, you will require a variable Phillips head screwdriver or equivalent screwdrivers to match the screws as well as a standard flathead screwdriver. We'll start by removing the top and bottom screws on the back of each of the side access panels of the computer. Make sure to place all of the screws in a bowl or container where you won't lose them. We'll then remove the panels. Next, there is a latch on the front next to the access panel. Removing this latch will allow the access to the PCI slot screws. There are two screws holding the video card in place and there may be one more if your VR module is already installed. The screws will be the same size as the access panel screws. While we are here, we will also unscrew the support bar, which has four screws in total. There is also one screw holding the GPU in place in the middle. A smaller Phillips head is recommended for unscrewing this. Remove your support bar, then remove the attached wire connected to the motherboard. Next, remove the two power connectors at the end of the graphics card. You will have to push down on the tabs of the power connectors to remove them. Press the top tab connecting the PCI slot to the graphics card to release it from the motherboard. Gingerly remove the GPU away from the motherboard. Place the GPU aside. Optional, remove the mounting bracket from the top of the GPU with a larger Phillips head screwdriver. You can screw the remaining screws from the mounting kit back into the GPU. The wireless headset module should easily pull out of the slot below the GPU slots. Place that to the side. Next. Locate your M.2 storage bay. This should be located to the right of the RAM slots. Just like the GPU, it should be removed after the tab at the top of the slot is pressed. Switch to a smaller Phillips head screwdriver or bit. Remove the two small screws holding the shielding together. Then remove the shield and unscrew the M.2 hard drive and pull the chipset out of the slot. Set it to the side as it will be used in the reassembly. Screw the casing back together and set it aside. Pull the RAM out of the motherboard by pushing in on the tab at the tops of the RAM slots. When pushed, the RAM should come right out. Both of the 8GB sticks can be set aside for the rebuild. Disconnect the power from the motherboard one plug at a time. Start with the largest 24-pin power connector. Then, unplug the two plugs above that connector and several SATA cables below the 24-pin slot. Some of the SATA cables have a silver push tab that must be depressed in order to remove them from the slot. Each of the cables can be pulled out from the backside to clear space inside the case. There will be several smaller cables connected along the bottom of the motherboard. Each of these must be unplugged as well. Optional, there is a graphics card power out cable, front fan connector, lead header cord that lights up the liquid cooler, one for the front head USB power, and lastly, a cord that is a bit harder to unplug. With the smaller Phillips head and possibly an extender clip, unscrew the screw that is holding the wireless card. Optional, even if you don't use the wireless card, we have found that the wireless card, if you use Azure HD for your computers, will allow the hard drive of the new build to activate through your Azure AD. If the dipole is still connected to the motherboard, just unclip it and set it aside for the rebuild. Next, you will need to take off the front panel. This may feel like it will break in order to pull the front off cleanly. Locate the three pinches that hold the front facing panel into the front of the chassis. Simply push up on them from underneath each of the clamps to cleanly release the front panel without breaking it. Make sure the wire attached to the front panel feeds out of the small hole in the front of the chassis. With your larger Phillips screwdriver or bit, remove the screws holding in the top face plate on the left and the right. The top should slide forward and lift up to release the top plate. Switch back to the smaller Phillips screwdriver. Unscrew the four front facing screws at the top area of the chassis that holds in the mounts for the hard drive bay. There is a fifth screw that needs to be removed on the right side of the computer, the side panel revealing the back of the motherboard. It may be hidden behind some cords. Remove it, then turn the computer around to the front of the motherboard. The hard drive bay should be hanging or easy to pull away from the front of the chassis. There should be two screws at the top of the bay. Remove the bay once unscrewed. 
Now, we will be removing the CPU heatsink. For this, you will need your flathead screwdriver. Remove each of the four screws, one on each corner. These screws will be used in the reassembly process, so make sure these are set aside. Have your thermal paste remover ready on hand. Before you remove your heatsink, remove the CPU power connector from the motherboard. Apply a few dots of your thermal paste remover, then use a tissue to rub the old thermal paste away. Make sure it's dry, then leave the heat sink to dangle in a safe location. Now, switch to a larger Phillips head screwdriver. Unscrew the screws on the top of the chassis that is holding the radiator or heat sink to the top of the computer. Hold the radiator to the top of the chassis while unscrewing so that it does not fall onto your electronics. Then, you can hand screw the screws for the radiator back into it to keep them with the associated radiator. Place the chassis so that the back of the motherboard faces the table. Depress the lever pressing the CPU into the motherboard and move it away from the CPU so that the processor is no longer locked into the motherboard. Then, very carefully pinch the CPU between the thumb and forefinger on opposite corners, being careful not to bend the pins previously plugged in. Once it is out, apply more thermal paste remover to the top of the processor and wipe it clean with a tissue. Use your purifier to neutralize the pH on the processor. Set the processor aside. Replace the CPU latch to its previous position. You can now easily unplug the power connectors for the north bridge of the motherboard and then unhook the back chassis fan as well. Take your Phillips head screwdriver and remove the fan located on the back of the computer. This is to make the motherboard removal easier. The fan will not be used in the rebuild. Now, you are ready to begin removing the motherboard screws. There are eight of them. Remove the screws. Grab your flathead screwdriver and use it as a lever to push out the back plate of the motherboard from the back of the chassis. You have to make sure that you align the three teeth of the back plate to their corresponding holes on the chassis in order to unwedge the motherboard back plate. Once that is done, the motherboard should lift from the computer chassis easily. If it is not, attempt to find the stuck location to wiggle the board free from the case. Do not bend or force it free as this will damage the motherboard. If it is getting caught, more than likely, the culprit is a screw that is still screwed in or the back plate is still being wedged in. Once the motherboard is free, remove the back plate of the heat sink as it will be used in the rebuild and it is the last piece you will need for the rebuild. Optional, replace the motherboard back into the case and screw all the wires back in. This is to keep it safe during storage. Then, refeed all of the wires from the power supply unit back through the front of the computer case with the motherboard side up. This will allow you to replace the back panel without any problems. Now, you'll want to remove the 3.5 inch hard drive bay. To do this, you should first remove the SATA cable, not the power cable, from both the motherboard and the hard drive and set that aside. Then, there will be three screws that you will need to remove with your larger Phillips screwdriver. There are two on the bottom and one on the top to remove. The cables from the PSU may get in your way as you remove the screws. Once they are removed, Pull the bay towards the back panel of the case to release it from the chassis. Once the hard drive bay is removed, you'll remove the hard drive from the bay by unscrewing the four screws, two on each side of the bay. Then, pull the hard drive from the bay and set it aside. Before replacing the bay back into the chassis, locate the inner teeth that guide the bay back into place. It may be difficult to place back into the chassis due to the power cords. Once it is back in, replace the screws to hold the bay in place. Tuck the wires back into place. Replace the top panel by sliding it into place. Grab two silver screws and screw the top panel back into place. Optional, you can remount the 2.5 inch bay back into place under the CD-ROM opening if you so choose. It is not shown here, but would be required before any other steps here. Feed the cord from the front panel back through the hole in the front of the chassis. Push the front panel back into place, starting from the top teeth to the bottom. Grab the back panel and slide the teeth into the corresponding locations, and then slide the panel forward, locking it into place. Put the two screws for the side panels back into place. Optional, 
If you want to keep your brackets in a safe location, you can remount the GPU mount back into the sidebar of the case by using a smaller screw and feeding it through the location that connects to the mounting bar. Slide the mounting arm back into the location it was when the GPU was removed and make sure it clicks into place. Use four more chassis screws to fix the mounting arm back into place. Make sure your wires are tucked in. Slide the front bay back into the drive bay slot. Place the frontal magnetic faceplate back in. Screw back in the two PCIe screws that are located near the back GPU area so that you don't lose them. Then, slide on the front faceplate similar to the back, screw the plate into place. That finishes the reassembly and all the remaining screws can be placed in a bag and stored in the same location as the computer.